And so much has come about in terms of new information on the situation since this time yesterday. Two bodies have been recovered from the Francis Scott Key bridge collapse. Six people you know presumed dead, and now two of them found. But the liberal media appear to have wasted no time to use this horrible event in this way. As a way to question the bridge's ties to racism, all because of who it's named after. Headline after headline now is starting to question who was Francis Scott Key, who wrote our nation's national anthem, and adding racial context to who he is. The Washington Post wrote this. Many have argued that he should not be celebrated because of what the National Park Service has called his conflicted relationship with slavery. Key spoke of black people as a distinct and inferior race. Key's parents enslaved people on their plantation. Key himself enslaved six people, and his wife's family were prominent enslavers in Maryland, according to the Park Service. All of that inside of a quote. Where are we going here, Lee? People are dead. There, it's a re it's a recovery effort. There are 764 tons of hazardous materials. Some of them have seeped into the river there below the bridge that used to exist into the water. Where, where are we going here with the national anthem? These kinds of tactics alone should be disqualifying. When you have this ship collide with a bridge, the bridge falls down, and you're, you're searching for survivors, the tragedy is hit, and the people in charge are kicking back and say, oh, let's see how we can turn this into an opportunity to pit black Americans against white Americans. How can we stir a racial divide in our country? Let's lead by tearing the population apart because of the bridge. Let's use this as an opportunity to advance our agenda of maybe being able to someday cancel the national anthem. Like, when I was watching the imagery, and I can't speak for any of you or anyone else out there who's watching, but when we saw the images of this bridge coming down, I, there was nothing within like a galaxy of what was going on in my mind where I was thinking, about racism and how we should use this as an opportunity with an election coming up in November to gin up black Americans and white Americans against each other. I think it's disgraceful. You can speak for me. Thank you. Uh, Emily, when, when you do look at this, though, George Washington Bridge, he had slaves. What, are we going to tear down one of the main thoroughfares going from New Jersey into New York? I'll be in a canoe to come to work. <laughs> Um, and I note, too, that in the coverage, uh, they mentioned that Francis Scott Key had uh, released or, or freed or somehow been involved in releasing enslaved peoples and said, but I think it was because of profit. So yeah. impugning Whoa. the act because they're presuming to know the intent behind it of someone that's been dead for literally hundreds of years. The whole thing is so asinine. It's so backwards. And you know when comedians make jokes about something sort of tragic or something and they go, too soon? When I read this, I just thought too soon and that there is never mm. a place to distort and distract Americans from what is a tragedy from an 81, first of all, the lives lost. And then secondly, an $81 billion annual port, 15,000 jobs per year. And now yeah. all these contracts declaring force majeure. So you can bet the ripple effect will be global, by the way. And yet, no, 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 let's talk about racism. It's just ridiculous. And the families of the deceased. Yeah, that's where it started with. Yeah. Construction workers trapped inside that vehicle down 25 feet or more in the water that they discovered overnight. No, they they want to think about anything but that, yeah. you know, and, and I, I listened to some of these comments and I think this is all Charles Manson ever wanted. Like all he wanted yeah. was a race war. And you know, it's like and we we get so easily distracted by that and it's like, you know, don't put me in, in a position to defend this, but what I will say is people are smarter than that. The national anthem means something to people and that first verse will always be the national anthem for this country, but still people dead set against it who want division, they will stop at nothing until this is the next cultural statue that they pull down. Hmm. Wow. Mm. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.